Good morning, students. Welcome back to online class. I am Subha. I am going to teach geography lesson three. Already, I have taught in the previous class uh, geography lesson three, atmosphere, isn't it? So once again, we can recall about this lesson, atmosphere. Uh, what do you mean by this atmosphere? It is the blanket of air. Okay. Next, what we have learned in the previous class about the composition of the atmosphere, structure of the atmosphere, uh, weather and climate, and the factors that influence weather and climate. Okay. Yes, I have given some questions also. I am thinking so you have learned. So please study well. So today we can go to our lesson uh, atmosphere about this the remaining portion. That is the uh, wind. Okay. Now, what do you know about this wind? Wind, wind means what? It is the horizontal movement of air. Okay. Please, students, listen. What do you mean by wind? You all know. You have learned in the lower class also that wind means the horizontal movement of air. Okay. So, the horizontal movement of air along the surface of the earth is called the wind. So, do you know what is the difference between wind and air? Wind is the horizontal movement and air is the vertical movement. Okay. So, the horizontal movement of air along the surface of the earth is called the wind while the vertical movement of air is called an air current. So, we all know that wind always blow from a high pressure area to a low pressure area. Okay. So, wind is mostly named after the direction from which it blows. For example, the wind blowing from the east is known as the easterly wind or easterlies. Next one, do you know which is the instrument used to measure this wind? It is the anemometer which records wind speed and why a wind vane measures the direction of the wind. So, please students, sometimes they may ask question, one word question, which is the uh, instrument used to measure the speed of the wind, that is the anemometer. Okay, and uh, next one, which is the uh, measure, uh, instrument used to measure the direction of the wind, that is the wind vane. So, do you know which is the unit for the measurement of this wind? That is the kilometer per hour or knots. Okay. Next one. Uh, this is the different types of wind we can go into study. And from this picture, we can, we know. Listen. Um, in this picture, what you understand? Can you see this picture? Anemometer and this wind vane. Anemometer. What is this anemometer? It is the instrument used to measure this speed of the wind. Okay. Next one. Wind vane. It is used to measure the direction of the wind. In which direction the wind was blowing? North or south or east or west. Okay. So, next one is the types of wind. Okay, what are the types of wind? There are four important types of wind. There is one detailed question also. Explain about the planetary winds or explain about this type of wind. So, winds are generally classified into the following four major types. Do you know what are the four major types of wind? Planetary winds, periodic winds, variable wind and local wind. Listen once again, there are four types of wind. What are the four types of winds? They are planetary winds, periodic winds, variable wind and local wind. So, listen carefully, one by one we are going to learn in detail. First one is the planetary wind. What do you know about this planet, pla planetary wind? That means planet, isn't it? How many planets are there? There are eight planets, isn't it? So, the wind which constantly blow in the same direction throughout the year are called the planetary winds. So, do you know what is the another name for this planetary wind? Students, listen, it is also called as 
permanent wind or the prevailing wind. Listen, there are, what is the another name for this planetary wind? It is also known as permanent wind or prevailing wind. Okay, so uh, there is one small question also. What do you know about planetary wind? So the wind which constantly blow in the same direction throughout the year are called the planetary winds. So one year means same year, the wind was blowing in the same direction. Okay, it won't change the direction. If, suppose if it is blowing in the north, it means always that a particular year, it will be blow in the north direction. So it is called as a, a planetary wind. So what is the another name for this planetary wind? It is the permanent wind or the prevailing wind. Okay, student. So what do you mean by planetary wind? The wind which constantly blow in the same direction throughout the year are called the planetary winds. So what is the other name for this planetary winds? They are permanent wind or the prevailing wind. Why it is considered as a permanent wind? Because uh, throughout the year in the same direction it is blowing. Because of that only it is named as permanent wind. Okay. Uh, these winds include uh, trade wind, westerlies and polar easterlies. So what are the types of planetary winds? There are three types of planetary winds. What are they? Trade winds, westerlies and polar easterlies. So one by one we are going to study about this. Listen, trade winds. First one is the trade wind. What do you know about this trade winds? Trade winds blow from the subtropical high pressure belt to the equatorial low pressure belt in both the hemisphere. What do you mean by hemisphere? That is the north hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. Isn't it? So, what do you mean by this trade wind? There is one another small question also. Uh, what is meant by trade wind? Trade wind blow from the subtropical high pressure belt to the equatorial low pressure belt in both the hemisphere, both in the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. Uh, from subtropical high pressure belt to the equatorial low pressure belt, it was blowing. So it is considered as a trade wind. Okay. Next, they blow with greatly regular force and in a constant direction throughout the year. So this trade wind also will blow constant throughout the year. So these winds, what is the use of this wind? It will be useful for the traders. For what purpose? One could depend on wind while sailing in the sea. Okay, for sailing on the sea also we need wind, isn't it? So uh, uh, these trade winds are useful for the traders. And so they are named as trade winds. Okay, students, once again you can recall what do you meant by trade winds? Trade winds blow from the subtropical high pressure belt to the equatorial low pressure belt in both the hemisphere. So why it is considered as a trade wind? Because it is very helpful for the traders. For what purpose? While they are sailing on the sea, it, the wind was blowing. Uh, due to that, it was considered as a trade wind. So it is useful for the traders. <coughs> Next one, westerlies. What do you mean by this westerlies? Westerlies are the permanent winds that blow from the tropical high pressure belt to the subpolar low pressure belt in both the hemisphere. Listen carefully. This is also another one question. What do you mean by this westerlies? Uh, uh, westerlies are the permanent wind that blow from the tropical high pressure belt to the subpolar low pressure belt in both the hemisphere. They blow from southwest to northeast. In the north northern hemisphere and northwest to southeast in the southern hemisphere. So what do you mean by this uh, westerlies? Westerlies are the permanent wind that blow from the tropical high pressure belt to the subpolar low pressure belt. Yeah, where it will be blown? Both the hemisphere, northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. They blow from southwest to northeast in the northern hemisphere and northwest to southeast in the southern hemisphere. Okay. Next one. Uh, the velocity of this westerlies 
uh, become so vigorous and fast to be called roaring frontiers at 40 degree, furious 50s at 50 degree and screaming 60s at 60 latitude. Okay, there is another one question also. Um, what do you mean by this? Uh, write short note on trade wind, uh, roaring frontiers. Write short note on trade wind and roaring frontiers. So this uh, trade wind uh, blow from the subtropical high pressure belt to the equatorial low pressure belt in both the hemisphere. They blow with great regularity force and in the constant direction throughout the year. Okay. Next, the velocity of the westerlies becomes so vigorous. Vigorous means water. It will be very uh, dangerous and fast to be called roaring frontiers. Okay. And uh, uh, at 40 degree and furious 50s, 50 degree and screaming 60s at 60 degree latitude. So for this westerlies uh, wind, there are it is considered as the vigorous wind. It was blowing very fast. So it is called, it has named as three names. What are the three names for this westerlies? Uh, roaring frontiers at 40 degree, furious 50s at 50 degree and screaming 60s at 60 degree latitude. Next heading is the polar easterlies. What do you mean by this polar easterlies? Polar easterlies are cold and dry polar wind that blow from the polar high pressure belt to the subpolar low pressure belt. Okay, listen carefully. What do you mean by polar easterlies? Polar easterlies uh, through the poles are cold and dry polar winds that blow from the uh, polar high pressure belt to the subpolar low pressure belt. These are weak winds okay, blowing from northeast direction in the northern hemisphere and the southeast directions in the southern hemisphere. Please students listen carefully. There is one uh, question also about this. Um, what do you mean by um, uh, polar easter lies. Polar easter lies are cold and dry polar wind that blow from the polar high pressure belt to the subpolar low pressure belt. So these wind are considered as a weak wind. From where to where it was blowing means from the northeast direction to southeast direction. Where is the northeast direction? It is in the northern hemisphere. Where is the southeast direction? It is in the southern hemisphere. So mostly this polar easterlies wind will blow from northeast direction to southeast direction. So it is blowing from northern hemisphere to southern hemisphere. Okay. Next one. There is one fact. Uh, the rotation of the earth causes deflection of wind from the original path called the Coriolis effect. What is called Coriolis effect? It is the rotation of the earth. And winds are deflected to the right in the northern hemisphere and to the left in the southern hemisphere, which is known as Ferrell's law. So, what do you mean by Ferrell's law? That is the deflection of the wind in the right in the northern hemisphere and left in the southern hemisphere is known as Ferrell's law. This was propounded by William Ferrell. So it is named as Ferrell's law. He used coral force named after G. G. Cor Coriol in 1792 to 1843 for proving Ferrell's law. Okay students. So what are the types of wind? Planetary wind, periodic wind, variable wind and local wind. So first one planetary wind we have learned isn't it. So under this planetary wind what are the subheading? Trade wind westerlies and polar easterlies. Okay. Next one is the periodic winds. What do you mean by this periodic wind? This periodic winds are the seasonal wind that change the direction periodically. Okay. These winds are caused by the differential heating of land and ocean. So what was the main cause for this periodic wind? It means 
due to the heat of land and ocean only this wind was blowing okay wind which reverses the direction with the change of seasons are called monsoon tropical monsoon winds of india uh, is the uh, best best example for this tropical monsoon wind so what do you mean by this periodic wind the periodic winds are the seasonal winds that changes their directions periodically these winds are caused by the differential heating of land and ocean okay so wind which reverses uh, the directions with the change of seasons are called monsoons tropical monsoon wind of india is a subcontinent is the best example okay so under this periodic wind there are different types of uh, wind Uh, first one is the uh, sorry the under this uh, periodic wind. What do you mean by this periodic wind? The periodic winds are the seasonal wind that change their direction periodically. Next is the variable wind. Third one is the variable wind. So variable from this heading itself we can understand it will change, isn't it? So under this heading. Uh, cyclone, tropical cyclone, uh, temperate cyclone, extra tropical cyclone, anti cyclone, uh, etc. These are the headings under this variable wind. So under this variable wind, uh, cyclone, this variable wind, a cyclone. The term cyclone is a Greek word meaning coil of a snake. Cyclones are centers of low pressure. Power wind from the surrounding high pressure area cover towards the center in a spiral form. Due to the rotation of the Earth, the cyclonic wind in the northern hemisphere move in anti-clockwise direction, whereas they move in clockwise direction in the southern hemisphere. So the cyclone um, in the northern hemisphere, how it is moving means in an anti-clockwise direction. Where in the southern hemisphere, how it was moving means in a clockwise direction. Okay, students. Next, the cyclone can be classified into three types. What are the three types of cyclone? They are the tropical cyclone, temperature tri cyclone, extra tropical cyclone. So about this one by one, we are going to study about these things only. Today we are going to learn. Next thing, the next class we can learn. Okay, the first one is the tropical cyclone. Here, yeah, tropical cyclones are known as uh, different names in different countries. Okay, so in India, uh, in Indian Ocean, how this it was named? It was named as cyclone. Please listen carefully. Sometime they may ask one word for from this. How this uh, tropical cyclone was named in different oceans? In Indian Ocean, it was named as cyclone. In the Western Pacific Ocean, it was named as typhoons. And in the Atlantic and Eastern Pacific Ocean, it was named as hurricanes. And in Philippines, it is named as bogias. And in Australia, it is named as willy willy. And in Japan, it is named as typhoon. Uh, so once again, I am saying that please listen. What are the different names for the cyclones, uh, tropical cyclones in uh, oceans? Okay, in Indian Ocean it is named as cyclone, and in the Western Pacific Ocean it is named as typhoons, and in the Atlantic and Eastern Pacific Ocean it is named as hurricanes, and in Philippines it is named as bogias. And in Australia, this tropical cyclone is named as Willy Willy, and in Japan, it is named as Typhoon. So, uh, so this tropical cyclone often causes heavy loss of life and property on the coast and become peak after reaching the landmass. Okay. So, from this picture, what you can understand? This cyclone, it is like a coil of a snake, isn't it? Next, there is one fact in your book. Listen, that is super cyclone. Another one cyclone, super cyclone. So this super cyclone, what it was 
occur means in Odisha. When it occurs means on Friday 29th October 1999. So this is one of the most dangerous, devastating and strongest storm to hit the Indian coast. So which is the strongest storm hit the Indian Ocean. Sometimes they may ask one word question. It was the violent cyclone that hit Odisha on Friday 29th October 1999. So these wind causes 7 meter tidal wave that swept more than 20 km inland and brought massive destruction and death to a number of coastal districts in the state of Odisha. So in 1999, there were more than 10 million people who had died. And 12 coastal bell districts are affected by this super cyclone. So more than 10,000 people lost their lives. Okay. Next one. Uh, do you know? There is one box. Listen. Deliberations for naming cyclone in Indian Ocean. When it was started means in 2000 AD only. Uh, and a formula was agreed upon in 2004. So, eight countries in the region, which are the eight countries, has named this cyclone Bangladesh, India, Maldives, Myanmar, Oman, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, and Thailand. These are the eight countries contributed a set of names which are also assigned sequentially whenever a cyclone storm developed. Next one is the temperate cyclone. Next cycle, next type of the cyclone is the temperate. So, temperate cyclones are formed along a front where hot and cold air masses meet in mid latitude between 35 degree and 65 degree north and south. Okay, where it was occurs means it was occurs on the Hot and cold air masses meet in mid latitudes. What was occurs in the mid latitudes that is between 35 degree and 65 degree north and south latitude. Okay, temperature cyclone do not become weak like the tropical cyclone on reaching the land. So, temperature cyclone commonly occurs over the North Atlantic Ocean, Northwest Europe, Mediterranean basin, Mediterranean basins. Temperate cyclone extend up to Russia and India in winter. In India, it is called Western Disturbance. So, it is another name for this temperate cyclone in India. It is called as Western Disturbance. Okay. A, fond, a friend is the boundary separating warm and cold air masses. One type of air mass is usually denser than the other with a different temperature and humidity. So, this meeting of air mass cause rain. So, what happened? When this air mass, when the cold air and the hot air meet, what will cause? Rain, snowfall, hailstorm, thunderstorm, lightning, cold days, hot days and windy days. Already we know when the air meet the cold air uh, and the hot air, warm and the cold air masses, uh, made at the time only what happened this cyclone also occurred and also not only cyclone because of that what are the things happen uh, it causes rain snowfall hailstorm thunderstorm lightning cold days hot days and windy days next one um, is the extra tropical cyclones next is the extra tropical cyclone what do you mean by this extra tropical cyclone? Where it will occur? It occurs in the latitude between 30 degree and 60 degree in both the hemisphere. They are uh, also called as mid latitude cyclones. They are also called as mid latitude cyclones. They collect energy from temperature difference which are found in higher latitude. Extra tropical cyclones produce mild showers to heavy gales, thunderstorm, blizzard and tornadoes. Okay, so extra tropical cyclone, what do you know about this extra tropical cyclone? 
uh, extra tropical cyclone occurs in the latitude between 30 degree and 60 degree in both the hemisphere, in both northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere. So, what is another name for this extra tropical cyclone? It is also called as mid latitude cyclones. Okay, next one is the anti cyclone. Anti cyclone and cyclone. Or from this picture, what do you understand? High pressure and the low pressure, isn't it? So, anti cyclone or the opposite of cyclone. Here, an area of high pressure region is found in the center, surrounded by low pressure on all the sides. Okay, the wind from the high pressure region move outwards to the low pressure region in a spiral form. Anticyclones are often accompanied by cold and heat waves. Okay. <coughs> Anticyclone is the opposite of cyclone. Next one is the local wind. What do you know about this local wind? <coughs> local winds are the wind that blow only in a particular locality for a short period of time. Okay. Uh, the local wind, where when it will occur means local wind or the wind that blow only in a particular in a particular period uh, and then also for a short period only it will blow. The effect of this local wind are experienced only in that particular area such as land breeze, sea breeze, mountain and valley breeze. They are mostly seasonal and have local name. For this local wind also there are some local names. What are the names? In Alps Europe it is named as Phone, North Coast of Africa, Sirocco, and Rockies, North America, Chinook, and Thar Desert in India, it is named as Lu, and Mediterranean Sea in France, it is named as Mistral, and um, Mediterranean Sea in Italy, it is named as Bora. Okay, so local wind also, uh, wind that blow only in a particular locality for a short period of time. So, it has also different names, uh, you all know, isn't it? So, uh, students, for, from this portion, today's portions, you write this, frame one word questions, study that, study thoroughly, okay? In the next class, I will give question answers and the remaining portions I will teach. Okay, students, thank you, students.